Welcome to Part 3 of the Testimony of an Apostle. In Part 1 of this series, we answered the question, Why does the Church need living apostles today? As we learned, Jesus chooses and calls apostles today for the same purpose that He did in the Book of Acts, and that is to give the Church the blueprint of truth. It is God's will that Christian doctrine be taught to the Church by living apostles. In part two of this series, we answered the question, why is God choosing this time to restore apostolic governance to the church? As we learned, we are in God's time frame called the second eighth week, and God marks each week with a steward to lead his people from dissolution to renewal. The steward is the key. In the next two videos, we're going to look at the signs and wonders of Apostle Eric's calling to understand God's selection of the chief steward of the second eighth week, the key God is using to bring the church through the door of transition. As we would expect, the testimony of God's choosing is filled with angelic visitations, dreams, and visions. This testimony stands in the power of God. For the God of our Lord Jesus Christ has put a sign in this calling to bridge the weeks to take the church from the sixth week to the second eighth week. God has put a wonder in his selection that does not stand in the wisdom of man. The face of Christ is seen in the stewardship of his grace and the manifold wisdom of God. Our Father's visitation of His people confirming these things is also a manifestation of His grace, witnessed by angels and men, a sign that cannot be gainsaid. No pomp or glory of man, no boasting of the flesh, but the endurance of the Spirit in the long-suffering of His Word has begotten a fruitful vine by the sides of His house, and filled the chambers of the soul with good things. The Father does these words. Here now is Apostle Eric to share with you the wonderful testimony of God's calling upon his life. The year 1951, the testimony of God upon my life begins in heaven. I was a tenth person standing in a line of spirits. Angels were busy preparing souls for their earthly existence. God said, who will go for me? I felt compelled to volunteer. I'll go. A very large angel took me out of line up to the front. God said, I will use him in the last days. I turned to the angel which brought me to the gate and asked, Will you let me remember this? Yes, you shall remember this and prosper. 
What is the spiritual significance? God's calling is by his choosing, not man's. The tenth in line is chosen. Leviticus 27, 32 and 33. And concerning the tithe of the herd, or the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the rod, the tenth, shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. Pre-birth revelation. My experience compared to biblical record. Jeremiah 1.5 says this, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you, a prophet unto the nations. Isaiah 6.8 Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. My Conversion My conversion took place on an unusually warm evening in the fall of 1971. It was my custom to go to a nearby hill to pray and seek God, for as yet I did not have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but was drawn to prayer and wanted to know God. On this particular evening, it was so evident to me that God was with me, I could feel His presence. After an hour of prayer, I turned to leave and I heard a voice very clearly inside which says, Don't leave. I said out loud, Who said that? As I continued to pray and wait upon God, for I was sure that it was He who was speaking to me, I felt an even stronger presence of God. I was weeping, asking the Lord Jesus to forgive me of my sins. Then I saw a strong wind coming towards me. As it came up the hill, the trees were bending, as if by the force of a terrific wind. But I felt nothing, as if everything around me was affected except me. A light surrounded me. I then began to stammer in a language that was foreign to me. I was speaking in tongues. Later, I found this experience in the Bible and Acts 2, 1 through 4. On the hillside, I was saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. In 1971, I had this vision, a confirmation of apostolic calling. My prayer that night, How shall I serve you, Lord? It was a cloudless night, and I saw the features of the moon clearly. I looked into the night sky. The moon changed to a perfect white circle, which shone with unnatural brilliance. Around the moon were twelve stars. This vision stayed for several minutes. I later found this in the Bible, Genesis 37.9. The symbolism represents a sign of stewardship, as in Joseph's case, and God's plan to restore apostolic governance. nineteen seventy seven apostolic calling and the Lord said I have called you to the office of the apostle and prophet great grace and great power shall be upon you I felt oil being poured over my head it felt like warm cotton as it spread over my face From the revelation of my calling to the present, God revealed to me the mystery of Christ as I read the Bible daily. Man apart from God's holy knowledge walks like a brute beast on all fours. When people read the Bible from the standpoint of the carnal nature, they remain unenlightened and darkened in their thinking. The Bible remains a closed book. God takes man from the brute beast to walk uprightly before him. nineteen seventy eight angelic visitation the angel of the lord appeared to me and stood at the foot of my bed my room was aglow with his presence the angel took me in the spirit and confirmed the word of the lord regarding my calling eight months earlier in nineteen seventy nine angelic dream vision i saw the angel of the lord standing over the north american continent directing the revival 
I saw the North American continent as a puzzle. As each piece came down from heaven, I heard the Lord call out cities and states. 1979 Dream Vision, Restoration of Covenant Priesthood. The Lord showed me a cross from which hung armor and vestments of the priesthood. The armor is the priesthood and the covenant is the cross. 